Buna Diminazza. That's the best it will get with my Romanian. <laughs> it's really a pleasure to have the opportunity this morning to share with you the concept of hybrid thinking. And I can imagine that you think, what does it mean, hybrid thinking? Well, I can assure you it has nothing to do with some neuropsychological brain exercise. But hybrid thinking is in fact looking what could happen if we bring the non-profit sector closer to the profit sector. And I would like to explain that through the example of Mobile School and Streetwise. Mobile School was founded 15 years ago by Arnaud Raskin, a Belgium product designer who was not so much in favor to develop the next new soup mixer or the next new table or the next new chair. He wanted to develop and to design something sustainable for street kids. The estimate number of street kids in the world is around 150 million. With street kids, we mean mainly kids living mainly on the street. So it can be that they have a house at night where they sleep, but they mainly operate on the street. The big problem with street kids is most of them, they do not go to school. And Arnaud Raskin told, if they don't go to school, we bring the school to the street kids. And he developed basically a chalkboard on wheels that you could extend. And if you extend it, you have about 12 meters where you can put on educational tools. We have about more than 300 educational tools in different fields. Basic education, health education, creativity, social abilities, but also entrepreneurship. And we mainly work on the self-esteem of street kids and the talent development. You can imagine the self-esteem of street kids is low. If you grow up in extreme poverty, or in an area of domestic violence, you don't get the praise, you don't get the pat on the backs as a kid in a normal family situation would have. So operating on the self-esteem is really important if we work with the mobile school. You can compare it with a grid in which most of the boxes are red. And step by step by working at the mobile school, we are able to get these boxes step by step a little bit more green. And that is working on the self-esteem, on the talent of the street kid. Currently, we have about 39 mobile schools in 22 countries worldwide. And as you see on the map, that are schools in Latin America, there are schools in Africa, we have also a few schools in Asia, but also in Europe. We have in Greece, we have in Dusseldorf, we have in Poland, and we are proud that we have an excellent school operating also for 10 years already in EAS. What is fascinating is that the schools are not produced in a traditional factory. The schools are made by students of a technical school in Belgium. And it excites them. Why does it excite them? Because making the schools give them purpose. It gives them a meaning. Instead of the traditional exercise in the class, they have now the opportunity to work on something which gives them meaning, which gives them reality, which gives them purpose. Instead of dropping out earlier in school, they now come extra hours in the evening, or they would come on Saturday on their motorbike to work extra hours on that school. If you work with street kids, you have kids that hardly survive, but you also have kids who positively deviate, who excel, who outperform. And one of these examples of outperforming is Juniette. She is from Nicaragua, and since eight years, she is living and working on the street. Please join me in watching the video of Juniette. Can I ask to switch off the lights, please? Eh, hola, 
Mi nombre es Juliet Maricela Machado Juárez. Eh, esta es mi casa. Ella es mi mamá, ella es mi sobrina. Mi casa, ustedes la ven así, eh, de este material. Eh, bueno, en realidad mi casa no era así. Primero era de plástico, eh, pero después mi mamá, ella, eh, la construyó eh, así, pared de, de tierra. Esta pared de tierra. Yo empecé a trabajar a los ocho años. Mi padre... Eh, se dejó con mi mamá cuando yo tenía seis años y entonces éramos muy pobres. Mi mamá no tenía... Era, éramos de escasos recursos bastante económicos y entonces necesitaba ayudarle a mi mamá, ayudarme a mí misma. Las cajetas de coco, las cajetas. Lleven las cajetas de coco, las cajetas. Primero, antes que todo, eh, yo recogía verdura en el mercado. Después comencé a vender agua. Comencé a vender agua. Y había más ingresos para la familia. Después pero siempre aquí en Matagalpa, en la Cotran. Y comencé a vender cajetas, al igual que mi mamá. Y como aquí en Matagalpa había mucha competencia de la venta de cajetas, entonces mi mamá comenzó a vender a Ginotea. Y entonces comencé yo también a ir a vender a Ginotea cajetas. Me llevaba una panita con 50 cajetas. <risa> y así, así fue como también ayudaba a mi mamá y a mí también. Me compraba algunas cosas. <risa> Me compraba a veces un par de chinelas o zapatos. O también para pagar algunos útiles del colegio. Que no nos demos por vencidos, que sigamos, que encontremos eso que buscamos. Porque yo sé que todas las personas buscamos algo. Siempre tenemos que saber tomar las decisiones. No, no dejemos que, que otras personas tomen las decisiones por nosotros. Así, porque siempre hay que seguir adelante, nunca hay que quedarse atrás o hay que quedarse estancado. Porque... Si uno se queda a decir no puedo o no puedo, entonces no va a poder, pero siempre hay que pensar positivamente porque siempre hay algo bueno que nos espera. Yo no soy de las personas que se rinden muy fácilmente porque yo sé que, que si algo me sale mal una vez que lo he intentado, lo puedo volver a intentar y no, no yo no digo no puedo. Aquí estoy. Y me gusta cómo he podido crecer. Y me amo a mí misma. Sí, siempre me propongo una meta cada año. Porque siempre hay que reconocer las metas a largo plazo y a corto plazo que tenemos. En mi familia yo me considero como... Como soy una hermana y soy una hija, pero además de eso me considero una líder. <risa> Primero la ciudad de la basura y todo. Y después las montañas verdes. Y el cielo azul. Sí, es como, es como, es como que aquí está la debilidad, pero también tenemos la fortaleza, tenemos las montañas, el aire fresco, aunque aquí no hay aire fresco, pero si nos vamos a las montañas, sí. Un cruce. 
Así es. Primero tenemos que pasar eh, por algunas debilidades, las caídas y después podemos pasar lo mejor. Pero a pesar de todo, siempre no hay que dejarlo, no hay que dejarlo pensar. <risa> That was Juniette. I hope you will agree with me that this is an inspirational story of a girl we met at the uh, mobile school, uh, of somebody who outperforms, who excels, who has that right focus to overcome. By the way, she finalized her university studies last year and she currently works as a journalist. Mobile school, non-profit. What is the main problem in the non-profit sector? Money. How and where do you get the money? Do you wait for the gifts? Do you wait for the grants of the government? Do you hope for philanthropy? We had the same issue with the mobile school. And we said we're going to take it in our hands and we're going to develop a profit organization next to the non-profit organization. Remember, mobile school works on talent development for street kids. Streetwise works on talent development for business people. We started to build a street skills model. Based on these skills we found with the outperforming kids on the street, as you saw in the example of Juniette. And one of the skills, first skills, is positive focus. I think you saw in Juniette a lot of positive focus meaning shifting from looking at the problem towards looking at the opportunities. If I work in business life, I meet so many people who are stuck in the problem, who do not have the ability to shift from looking at the problem towards looking at the opportunity. Second street skill is agility and resilience. If you then have a problem, how agile and how resilient are we to overcome that? If we would have more resilient people in business, that would be a great benefit in our opinion. Third street skill is proactive creativity. It's not about the big creativity, but it's about the small creativity, the strengths, the untapped potential we detect and we find in people in businesses today. So we don't want to aim for big creativity workshops, but for small initiatives, unlocking that potential of people in the organizations. And the last street skill is cooperative competition. We believe it's not only in companies about cooperating, you also need to have a certain competition if you want to outperform. And the best example is what I often see between the sales and marketing departments. They are often in fight. And a good competition works as long as you cooperate in the right direction as well. With that street skills model, we go to business companies and we sell workshops, leadership development programs, management development programs, and with the income, 100% of the profit, we fund the mobile school. And that's what we call our hybrid model. Mobile school on the top, non-profit, reaches out to street kids. The street kids inspire us to build the street skills model and programs to offer to business companies. And business companies take it, and with the profit of that, we do not only develop their people in companies, but they also contribute for the social cause. And 100% of the profit goes back to the mobile school. That's what we call an example of hybrid thinking, a hybrid model. Now you know what hybrid thinking is. Now you know an example of a hybrid model. The question is, why would I do that? I'm going to give you three benefits. First of all, engagement. What do we badly need in companies these days is an engaged workforce. What do I see in reality? A three 2013 Gallup International study showed 
in Western Europe, 66% of the people are disengaged. On the contrary, I see people picking up voluntary work. Volunteerism is increasing. People become secretary, treasurer of the local football club. They pick up local responsibility in the library. Some of them even organize music festivals in their free time, for free. How does it come that these same people get not engaged in a paid job in a business company? The difference is they find purpose, they find meaning in the voluntary work. What could happen if we could bring that meaning, that purpose in our business companies today? What would that mean for the profitability, the bottom line, as we call it? Second argument is balance. Let me first drink. Balance, I mean a hybrid model lies in the middle between, at the one hand, the extreme profitability-driven elements of companies, and we saw since 2008 the financial crisis that this is a little bit becoming problematic, at the one hand. At the other hand, we see, on the right-hand side, the pure non-profit sector looking for opportunities to obtain and to get financial sources. Hybrid models put themselves a little bit in the middle. It's basically a best of both worlds, taking the best of profit and taking the best for the social cause. Last argument, we are confronted with a new group of employees, the millennials, also known as the Generation Y, the people born between 1980, and there are a lot of them here, so I have to be careful what I say, and about, roughly speaking, 2000. These people are now in, as a young workforce, in our companies or are, are about to start to work in our companies. While international research shows that these people are not only looking for a fair payment in the job, but they also want to find purpose, to find meaning in the job they do. If we want to keep these people, or we want to attract these people, we better bring purpose to our organizations, better bring purpose to our work. To sum it up, I'm convinced about the huge potential of hybrid thinking. Why? It brings the profit sector closer to purpose. It brings the social sector closer to financial autonomy. I explained you the why. I would like to trigger the discussion and return the question to you, why not? Multimask.